welcome to my channel. Hello. So today we're going to be filming a Q&A about um, commonly asked college questions. A friend who is just starting her college journey submitted these questions to us. And I did a college video just in general what I wish I knew when I first started or even when I started my bachelor's. So I'll link that one down below. But we're both college students right now. I'm starting my last semester this week actually. And um, I have an associate's in early childhood from College of the Canyons, a city college. And then I took a few years off and then I decided to go back for my bachelor's. I didn't want to, but I'm happy I'm almost done. So I started my bachelor's in 2017 fall and I'm finishing spring 2019. And then I graduated high school 2013 and I finished my associate's December 2014. So, and then P has an associate's degree in administration of justice, and before he got his bachelor's, he decided that he wanted to make sure he was getting in something that he loved, and, right? Yeah. <laughs> and was going to be able to get a job in for sure. Um, so he decided to change it, so he's um, going for forensics now, so still kind of the same field. Biology major. So now he went back to City College to get all the new prereqs and everything before he transfers out mm -hmm. to a two to a four year. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. So we'll probably split this into two videos because we know it's going to be pretty long, um, and we might repeat ourselves because sometimes the same answers or the same things could kind of apply to both answers. Both questions. Or yeah, both questions. So, um. We will read the question and then both answer. I thought it would be helpful to have two different perspectives because we're different learners and we have different personalities. So, the first one is How do you get better at time management? Uh, the way I approach it is uh, time management, um, prioritize your things, uh, just hit the important things first and then. Um, the minor things, la sorry. I'm laughing at Dexter. Uh, no, that's distracting you. Only... <laughs> <laughs> He's still going. Alright, back to the question. Prioritize your, your, your sub, uh, your, your, um, assignments. Um, just prioritize it. Uh, try to get some, um, Tutor time, if you need the tutor time, get it in before or after the class. That way you're kind of still in between. I know some people work, so um, you either work before or after the class. Uh, if you have a night shift, um, try to squeeze it in during the days that you can. Because some people start like maybe, or have that late in the day shift to where you have that night class, I mean. A night, a night class. And sometimes the tutor center isn't open past that class time. So, I mean... Just try to squeeze it in. Um, try to get a schedule set up with your work schedule to where it's like, okay, this day I'm going to start work from 8 in the morning and I get off at 5 in the afternoon or something like that or, you know, 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, that means my class doesn't start till 6. So from 4.30, I'm going to go straight from work to the tutor center, get the tutoring center done just before class. And then when you start in your class, it kind of is beneficial in that sense because you kind of start getting your um, you're getting the learning previous and then while you're in class you don't have to you don't have as many questions when the teachers bringing up certain subjects sometimes that's how it works out um, other ways is probably like um, if your class starts at like let's say five just go straight to the class after work and then hopefully that tutor center is open after your class session if it isn't um, just try to find a day to where it is open. Some of them, they are open during Saturdays, so try to get that Saturday morning intercession going, or tutor session going, so that's the way I would do it. Um, for me, I would say just having a list and like having a schedule out on paper for me works really good. I really pay attention, like I don't pay much attention to the syllabus all I care about is the due dates honestly like that's what I want to see because then I can be like okay this one I have a little more time so I'm not going to work on this one today you know just kind of go through and schedule what you're going to work on what's due um so 
for me, that's how I do it. It's just like by making a list and by scheduling. And then I forgot to mention in the beginning, he works full time. And then I work, um, I don't work full time at all. I work like part time and then I do YouTube and blogging. So even with like my YouTube and everything, I just schedule everything out and make a list of what needs to be done because that's how my mind works and that's what helps me time manage is that I never have much downtime and I don't sleep much but that's how I run my life kind of is I need to know like when I'm sitting down what's next you know I'm gonna take a break and watch one television episode and then I'm gonna get up and do this on my list next you know so that's how I take care of time management uh, yeah, I try to say with that time management concept, um, try to include in that time span at least a seven to eight hour rest schedule because you're going to need your sleep. Um, that's it's, it's good to stay healthy during this time because your brain functions a lot better when you're, when you're healthy and you're ready to go. So I say eat a proper, yeah. proper meals. Um, Things like that that kind of help out. Um, and brain food with like omegas and stuff, yeah. not like going to McDonald's on your breaks and yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. You know, I get it. Sometimes you have to do it. Mm -hmm. We've done it. I yeah. mean, it's not like, yeah, we've done it. But I mean, when we were going to COC, we commuted to Santa Clarita like an hour mm -hmm. and we both worked in Santa Clarita. So it was pretty tough, but yeah. we didn't eat like we do now. Yeah. make Even when you eat out though, you still got that healthy option. So, I Fast mean, food places have salad. They do. Get no dressing. No dressing. <laughs> but yeah, definitely that I would include that into time management. How do you best cope with a professor that is strict and assigns too much homework or any other difficult type of professors? Okay, for that one, I would say, once again, that time management kind of goes into that one. Um, and also... Uh, Aside from time management, prioritize this, the the work that needs to be done. So on your on your syllabus, sometimes they'll put the assignments that are going to be due. Sometimes they won't. Um, they'll put the big major assignments, and um, some of them, not all of them, but uh, prioritize with the big major assignments, especially if it's um, worth the uh, most points. Yeah. Cope with the professor that is strict assigns too much. Okay. Yeah. Um, with the bigger projects versus the smaller projects. If you start falling behind a little bit on it, um, don't worry about it. Don't stress out too much. Um, everyone kind of wants that A, and that's a good thing to thrive for. And it's a good thing to, you know, get set up for as an A. Um, but if you get a B in a class or anything like that, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. You'll be all right. Um, but like I said, just straight for the bigger, the big picture. Like the big picture stuff, the stuff that's going to get you past that class is what you need to focus on. So if you miss like a homework assignment, it's alright. I mean, I'm not saying miss a homework assignment. <laughs> Try to get everything done as best you can. But I did have um, a professor that assigned too much homework. So oh I mean, we've, we've had that happen to us a couple times. So Mostly. It's, it's just busy work is what it is. So... Um, just try to get through your busy work. If you maintain a proper schedule and everything like that, you should be able to squeeze in just like an hour or two of homework a day or something like that, or just straight classwork, and then erase all distractions during that time. That way you can actually do a lot more during put that time. Put your phone away. Yeah, put everything off to the side. Whatever's going to distract you, just put it off to the side. Um, throw on whatever music, whatever's going to motivate you during that time. And then just just get your stuff done. Prioritize your things. That's what you're going to need to do during that kind of professor. Um, and then you should be able to get out of that class just fine. Uh, and once again, if you're struggling with that class, giving you a lot of busy work, and then also not understanding what's being given to you, get that tutor center time in. I can not stress that enough. I'm I'm a big tutor. I <laughs> I love going to the tutor center. I you get. A majority of the tutors there are pretty good. Um, you might every once in a while get someone that you don't click with, but everyone, you have to remember, everyone has a different learning method, a different way of doing things. Some people are like fast forward, some people are one step at a time. So get in contact or, or try to find out what the best tutor is going to be for you. And then every single time you go to the tutor center, look for those people that are going to benefit you in the long run. Um, that's the best I've got for that. Uh, there's not much you can do. I mean, when you take that class, 
you're committed to that class, so you're, you're going to get through it. Um, they're going to assign you a ton of homework, a ton of things like that, and it's a class that you need, especially like, I mean, sometimes they have professors that you can switch around, but sometimes they don't. So I would just buckle down and get ready for the for the run, essentially. <laughs> and a lot of the time, um, two things about the tutor center, which are really good. He's really good at going to the tutor center. I'm awful at it. But um, a lot of the time they have online um, schedules for like, for instance, if you're in trig, they have online like, okay, here are the trig tutors. Here are their names. Here's their hours. So if you go and you find that you really like someone, you can go check their hours and see if you can match up with their hours to go to the tutor center. Mm -hmm. And they also sometimes have some online resources for you um, that maybe you could get some free online tutoring. We've never done it, but yeah. I have seen the options. They actually, they just started that up at VC, so they're starting to do that to where you can actually do Q&As with the tutors. And um, sometimes they'll respond, sometimes they won't, which is kind of... Um, the bothersome and yeah kind of frustrating especially when you're stuck on a single problem but um it is an option and um at least if they're closed and you you put it out there technically i mean if they're closed you're not going to be able to go to the tutor center regardless so Try the that. hopes that they're going to respond during that time which from what i've heard they do a pretty decent job at it um you'll be all right. I mean, it's, it's an option that's out there. So that's really good. And it's said. also a better option. Like then, you know, sometimes, so my response to this is that sometimes you're not going to get along with someone. It's just life. You know, there's sometimes that your personality just doesn't meet other people's personality or you don't agree with the way they're teaching it. I've been in classes, um, more in city college. I had this one class that was a art history class and it was just a transfer unit. And it was like a beginner class and it was online and it was so difficult. The test was like you had 15 seconds to answer the questions and it was closed book. But I would have to have him going through the book for me because it was identifying who created these fonts. And they all look like Times New Roman and it was just so crazy. And it would be like an art picture and you're like, who created this? And it would have two of the same names that that was both their style. So you're like, I don't know, I don't know. So... And you only had 15 seconds, and if you clicked off the browser, your you would fail the test. So it was super difficult, lots of homework like that. But even if, like, as long as you can pass it and get a C, it's, it's worth it. As long as your GPA is decent, you can take the hit of a C in a few classes. So it might not be what you want. When I entered City College, I was like, oh, I'm getting all A's. I graduated with all A's, so guess what? I'm getting all A's in college, nothing less. Well, that's just not. It's just not, not saying that nobody's ever done it, but it's not the biggest deal, honestly. Nobody looks at your degree like when you go to apply for a job and is like, mm, you got three C's. Especially when you're working. Constantly, yeah. some people. I mean, some people have that that blessing of uh, the genetic lottery in the sense that their brain function is incredibly high, and they can do all this crazy schooling, and they're, they're doing all this crazy work along with their schooling and everything like that, and their their brain consumes things like incredibly quickly, and then it is just. I mean, that's great, but not everyone's the same. So, like I said, everyone has a different learning. So everyone learns, learns faster, learns slower. I mean. But, um, and like she said, a C is not going to kill you. I mean, it's, you're getting through it, especially, if, I mean, I understand the concept once again of going for that A, but as long as you thrive high, you'll be good. Just, just aim high and you'll be, you'll be all right. Get out of there with a B. <laughs> and, um, so the other thing that I was going to say is you may not get along with a professor, but like he said, there may not be many options. Like at Channel Islands, um, a lot of the times it's just one teacher that teaches that class. So you're going to have to take it anyways. Just do it, get it over with, you know, do the best you can. There's sometimes just not an option in professors. Mm -hmm. Do rate my professor if that's an option and you can check um, professors when you're signing up for classes. Do that, of course. But if you can't and you get one professor, it is what it mm -hmm. is. You have to make it through. So just buckle down and do it. But going to the tutor center can help you because, like we were saying, um, sometimes you match up personalities and learning styles with one of the tutors mm -hmm. more than your professor. Oh. So that can really help you. It's like you can sit through your professor's class and take notes, and that tutor can kind of decode it for you and, like, you know, help you out 
um, geared to your learning style. Mm -hmm. So, next question. <laughs> um, how often do you read and go through a textbook after a lecture? Um, that one is, all right, so for the most part, you're going to read through your notes. Um, certain classes don't, uh, don't have actual textbooks. They have the option of getting a textbook. But of course, books for school cost so much, you're going to sit there and be like, do I really want to spend $250 on this book? Or am I going to be okay just getting by without the book? Especially if the professor says, sits there and says, you probably won't need the book, then you're going to be like, I probably shouldn't get the book. I'm not going to spend the $250 if this professor says you probably will not need the book. That doesn't say that they're going to be reading through the book the whole time. So, I mean, but the plus side of having the book is you have a reference tool. Um, so you can sit there and the professor is trying to explain something to you because you got to remember the professor's notes is kind of off of the book because they're trying to go off of certain things, but they don't have as a much as much like information as the book does um, one of the biggest things that I learned from this past semester was I had two professors and they did not care what series you got of the book because some of them they're pretty similar so they might be you might have to get um, they're, they're telling you you need to get the sixth edition but sometimes the fifth edition edition isn't too far off and it's like a fraction of the price you know $250 looks horrible but 15 or 20 bucks doesn't look that bad so, so it doesn't help to have those tools especially if the professor says you probably will not need the book so with that being said like having that book of reference like that it's amazing it's okay and then another thing that they do is some professors like I was lucky enough to have a professor last semester she would print the slides out for us at the beginning of each class which it's amazing. That's actually like kind of a luxury, I feel, <laughs> because not all professors will do that. Or even post their lectures. Yes, I'm exactly, like... or post their lectures. So sometimes with that, um, definitely that was super helpful. I, I went through all the slides that she printed out. I went through everything. Um, and if they do not post lectures or they do not do certain things like that, it doesn't hurt to ask them. Just ask them if they never made a statement saying that I they're don't. not, I don't post lectures, it doesn't hurt to ask. The worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to sit there and say, no, I don't do that. I don't post my lectures. No, I will not send my lecture out to you. But you can always ask. Or ask if you could record. Yeah, or that. That actually works out too because yeah. um, you can actually see what's going on. Um, that's a lot of memory sometimes though, but it's worth it. I mean, but yeah, so... Going back to that proper question on how often, I say as often as you can, but I also understand the concept that your brain gets kind of tired of saying the same thing over and over and over again, but you ultimately have a goal in the end, and the, the goal is to get past this class, get past everything that you need to get through to get that piece of paper at the end. So I would say after class, um, if you want to break in between to eat your lunch and discuss whatever you you did in class um, or eat your dinner or whatever you're gonna have in between do at least an hour a night that'll actually benefit you a lot more than doing nothing a night so I would recommend that um, another thing that I also do is um, I'll if you're not a person that likes to read but you're auditory auditory learner or even if you have a smart TV or Xbox or whatever I'll, I'll start playing YouTube and I'll watch usually on my phone though is I'll watch chemistry videos that's what I do, and that helps out a lot because then they do a step-by-step -step process, and I'm like, I didn't understand that in class, but I get it now. So things like that will help you out. That's what I do at least, so um, maybe not always notes. Sometimes it's just a video because they have, once again, everyone has a different perspective on how they approach a different problem, so that's what I do. So for me, I'm an auditory learner, so honestly, like reading through my book, unless the teacher says, like, specifically look at this part of the book, I'm not going to do it straight up honestly or if I'm answering questions like out of the book I will like look through for that answer um, but honestly I rarely use my books I feel like the teachers notes or their slideshows like notes that I take in their class are more helpful sometimes because a lot of it that's what they want you to learn so don't make it harder on yourself 
by learning all these extra things unless you need it. Like if it's your major, then it's a different story, you know, and you might be interested and want to learn everything in that book. But if it's just like a core class that you have to take, just don't do, don't force yourself to learn extra. If the teacher is not forcing you to know it, do the minimum. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm an auditory learner. I love flashcards. I love, um, sometimes I'll look up YouTube videos of just them reading. Like, even if it's like a novel for a class, I'll look up, and sometimes it's kids reading. But I can cook and meal prep or do something, and I'm listening to them reading, and I'm taking it in for me. So I think learning what kind of learner you are is super helpful in the journey of going to school. Mm -hmm. Because you know which ways are going to help you learn. So if I just sit there and read a textbook, it's not going to help me. Mm -hmm. But it will just waste my time and then I'm screwed because I don't know anything. Like, it's not really going to help me. And you definitely do get to learn on yourself a lot. Going through college, you're going to be like, why didn't this work out with this professor? And you start realizing things that your personality, like, oh, I realized I learned better this way than this way. So, as she was saying, everyone just has just that different... Different styles. Mm -hmm. So, he's like a tactile and a visual learner. Mm -hmm. And I'm an auditory learner. So, um, I would say... For me, looking through my notes and stuff, I don't usually do it like right after class or anything. I usually do it like right before a test or something. That's just what helps me because lectures, I can kind of take that all in and pretty much remember what they're saying as long as I'm paying attention. But there are some days where I'm just like exhausted, my brain's not working, and I'm like, well, I'm going to have to look at this later. Or I'm going to have to hear this later, you know, because it's just not, it's just not going in right now. It's not working for me. So... Um, I usually try to take several classes in one day so that I don't have to go to campus as many days. So for that, by the time I'm done with all those classes, like three or four classes in a day, I'm done. I don't want to look at my notes. I don't want to look at any of that stuff. Unless there's a test, then I will. But see, for me, I can look at it right before a test. That's actually best for me. Like a few hours before a test or something. Um, I usually show up to where my class is if I have the time and I'm free. And I kind of see there's usually people there waiting. And the, you can kind of say, like, hey, I have flashcards. You want to, like, you know, what part are you having a problem with? Like, kind of work together. Um, you'll notice as you continue on in college that usually before a test, there's a lot of people around. You know, they may be there to ask the professor questions or just be looking for some classmates to kind of help them study and figure it all out. So that is helpful for me to review it, like, right before a test. But for him, that wouldn't work. Like, mm -hmm. cramming before a test will mess him up. It jumbles my brain up a lot. Like so, I get things flipped around, like something should be one thing, another one should be another one. And then I'll sit there and be like, oh yeah, this is how it was. And my brain just gets completely like flipped confused. around. Yeah, and confused. So, and it's too much too quick. So know what works for you. That's my best advice mm -hmm. on that. So if you're an auditory, it might be helpful to like right before a test, look at it, you know, but for some people it might not. Yeah. So. I mean, it's helped me before, though. I've done, I've done it. Not saying that I haven't done it, but I realize, of course, like anyone else, you should have like you'll have a stronger background on that test or that's a stronger um, grade. Yeah, grade when you're done with that test. If you put that study effort in, and just stay consecutive, just just I mean consistent. So just stay consistent and have. Um, Dedicate a few days a week if you need to like mm -hmm. I'm gonna do three days a week for this chemistry class And I'm gonna do two days a week for this math class mm -hmm. and that's how I'm gonna you know Or even if you do two hours a day of just study session Just do one hour towards one subject and one hour towards another subject or like she said split it up two hours a day per one subject so Yeah What do you do when given a huge paper over the but work over the weekend? Um, so, going to, we're not quite sure what everyone does, so it's like, you know, someone's work weekend can be 16 hours, someone's work weekend can be, you know, 48 hours or something like that, so, it all depends if you work like 224s or something <laughs> random, yeah, we don't, we don't too. know, yeah, we don't know your, your work schedule, but, um, definitely try to, um, once again, going back to the prioritization, if you have that paper that's going to be over the weekend and you have to, it's going to be due the following week or anything like that, um, just get it done. Get as much done as you possibly can. Churning in some work is better than churning in no work. That's a huge thing. So um, 
just focus as much as you can on that paper. And I know sometimes you'll have a class, like if you have two different classes, they'll have two different assignments that are due. So you're going to have this big paper and then you have these like small micro papers or something like that or little assignments or once again prioritize it so which one's going to be worth more to you in the long run especially depends on the work pace that you have um, and if you work if you have a break time in between do your homework at work I do that sometimes I'll, I'll take it into work and I'll work on it during my my two breaks in my lunch time I'll work on my homework so I mean just do as much as you can don't turn in nothing. <laughs> so for me, I write like a lot more papers in my major. It's just, I mean, that's just my major. We write reports on things. We just, we observe a lot. So this past semester, I procrastinated a little more than I ever have in my life. But in one week before, I did a 30-page paper, an 11-page paper, and like a 7-page paper. And that was insane. I did not think that I could do that. Um, but I did it and I'm proud of myself. So what you have to do is know, like, if it helps you to write an outline, mm -hmm. make sure you write down, like read what the requirements are, decide what you're going to write on, you know, and then make an outline. Even if you're at work and you're like, let's say you're a cashier and all of a sudden you're helping a customer and something pops into your head. As soon as that customer has gone, just write that down on your arm, on something piece so of paper you, with you or something, little notepad. Yeah, rip off a piece of receipt, write it on there, put it in your pocket. And if something on the paper doesn't make sense, ask the teacher. Communication's key. Ask them, just in Don't case. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. of your professors. Um, I think it highly depends on what school you're at, but at least like Channel Islands for me, and even COC, like the professors were pretty much like at your level. Mm -hmm. Like they're not trying to be above you or like I'm older than you so I know that, you know, yeah. So they are pretty approachable. Go see them in office hours. Email them, you know. A lot of them even give you their phone number. Text them, like, figure out if you have questions, you know. Try to review the assignment before so then you know if you have questions, you can actually have them answered in person. But I've had it to where I'm home and I just barely look at the assignment and I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know what that means or, you know. And don't be afraid to... um Ask your classmates, like if you exchange numbers with anybody, like try to exchange with at least one person. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of be like, hey, I'm not understanding, like what are you doing for it? Or like what's, you know, could you kind of explain that? I, I'm just lost. And a lot of the times they'll respond and actually be able to help you without having to go to the professor. And like he said, turn something in. If you can ask for an extension, sometimes they'll let you get like a... Don't. One day extension, a 24 hour extension with 10% off. Well, that's better than turning in nothing. Yeah, so or 0%. turning in a paper that's 50% complete. So if you can actually squeeze that in for that following day, that extra 40% or even 30%, it's worth the shot. And it's worth it. Let's be honest, in college, sometimes you just have sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times where it's like, I slept three hours last night, but here I am at student teaching and I have to go home and I have to do a bunch of work. I have yeah. to cook. I have to do something like it's just tough, but it's temporary. Yeah. You will get through it. Like you're not going to be doing this for the rest of your life. So remember that, that it's like, you know what? I'm working hard. I'm doing it, but I'm going to be done and I'm going to get my degree. So just remember that, that like even if you lose some hours of sleep, yes, it's not suggested, but sometimes you have to do it. Yeah, every once in a while. I mean, it happens, it happens. The you know? last, I think, last semester I took uh, my, my math final? No, my chemistry final, <laughs> I think, with an hour and a half of sleep in a, like, 30-hour period or 30-some-odd hour period. So, it happens. So, make it fit. And if you know it's due on Sunday night, Try to start it on Monday. Work on it two hours a day. Work on it mm -hmm. something. Get to that tutor center. Sit down and make yourself work for like four hours and then take a break, you know. Put everything away. Just have water, paper in your laptop or tablet, whatever. And then work for, you know, either do three pages or work for two hours, three hours. And then I need a break. I need to go get some brain food, you know. I need yep. to go take a walk. Go get the mail. Do something, you know, get on Instagram for, you know, give yourself like a 30 minute break yeah. and come back to it. Do a little workout 
and come back to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's smart to sit and do it for 10 hours. <laughs> you Solid, know, no. You're not going to have the best product. If that's what you have to do, do it. But the best possible product, try to split it up so you're not working on it while you're working on the weekend. If you can do it before, awesome. Yeah. start it before. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Don't procrastinate on it. I have to say I've never had a professor that's just been like, paper, do Sunday, you know? Yeah. It's usually all on the syllabus. I don't even know that they can. Well, I guess they can do that, but... Yeah. Um, I'm trying to I think feel like it's really rare. I've never had anybody do, do that. something random. And the only time I think I've ever had anything is if, like, um... I, I may have had, like, a, a math or something like that that'll say, this is kind of due, and uh, I'm going to give you guys this homework assignment because you guys look like you need that boost or something like that. If the class average was very horrible in an exam, um, they'll sometimes give you that boost. You're like, I think you guys need a little bit more work on this or something, if, especially if it's a rollover topic that wasn't touched up enough on. So. Next question. How do you lift yourself up after a not-so-hot grade on a test? Uh, don't get knocked down by that grade. It's You'll be alright. Uh, one bad grade isn't gonna kill your college career, so I mean just... You'll be alright. Um, sometimes, you know, like I've been frustrated over a failed exam or something. Go for a run, go... same thing. Do an activity that kind of keeps your mind off of things or relaxes you a little bit or... I don't know, but um, one way or the other, just don't let that knock you down. Be optimistic about it. Um, like, once again, I mean, I've had where I got knocked down, and it's just like, it's frustrating. It is, but it's just telling you to work harder and um, to get to your ultimate goal to pass that class. And once again, you're going for that piece of paper, so <laughs> just... Stay in it. Don't don't give up either. Like if you're halfway through a semester and you're just like, oh my gosh, I just failed this exam. But how about the other exams you took? Maybe there's more exams in that just one that one exam that you took. Um, so I mean, just once again, work harder. Don't procrastinate on on your work. Do at least. That just means you need to study more. Throw in that tutor time once again. I mean, if you can, do as much as you can just to to come out on top. Um, but don't let that grade knock you down. You'll You'll be okay. You'll be all right. I mean, if a lot of a lot of classes have more than one test, it's usually a midterm and a final, mm -hmm. you know, at least. If not, there's some every two weeks, you know, depending on the class. But like he said, don't let it ruin you. That to me is like, okay, fine. I failed. That sucks. You know, I was working hard. But you know what? Maybe what you were doing wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Maybe you crammed before that test, and it's like, you know what? That actually screwed me. Like, I shouldn't have done that. So now I know I need to dedicate an hour every day of the week before a test yeah. to do flashcards or to go to the tutor center. So I say take that test and maybe try to review it. What did I mess up on? What did I ruin? Like, what screwed me on this test? And then be better for the next time. Don't let that ruin you, especially if you're halfway through. Don't just give up because that's not going to let you pass, even with a C. If you're just like, well, I already, like, if I drop, I'll get a W, and so I'll just fail this class. No. That means you need to stick it out even harder and just do whatever you can. If you need to, go talk to the professor. What could I have done differently? Like, what, mm -hmm. you know, meet with the professor. Sometimes that gives you a face to the professor, and they know you're trying. So they'll be a little bit, like more, you know, caring in a sense. Mm -hmm. They're like, wow, this person failed and they didn't let them, it didn't break them. You know, they actually came to me and asked, how can I be better? And as long as you're trying, a professor actually reasons with you. It's when you're not trying that they realize you're not trying. If you haven't been there all semester and you show up for the midterm and failed the test and you're like, oh man. What could and I then done? you go to them, they're going to be like, uh, show you up? could just showed up probably. Like, yeah. So... That's one thing that always drives me crazy is that like somebody doesn't show up and then they're still able to pass a class. That irritates me. I think all professors should have, you know, um, all professors should have attendance as part of the grade. 
Because that's just wrong to me. Like, I just don't understand how you just don't and go to class. and. It, then... it also depends on some professors. They're actually pretty strict with the syllabus in the sense of you miss three classes, you get dropped. Yeah. That happened last semester. There was one professor, she sat there and she said, if you miss this many classes, you're going to get dropped. So she's like, if you don't see people here, or if you're here and you didn't hear or didn't read whatever I sent the emails out to, I already dropped you guys. You missed three days. You're done. So, um, just pick yourself up mm -hmm. and do something that relieves your stress. Don't dwell on it. That's not going to help you to be, it already, you're already done. You already failed it. So what's the point of being like, man, you know, you can't go back in the past and fix it, but you can look forward to the future and be better on the next one and everything else, you know? So, and like he said, go for a workout, do something. What really helps me is I love to shower like in the dark with like nice calming like ocean music or something like that that makes me feel like relieved and happy and like de-stressed so do what you can <laughs> you know and then to add to it we also know like we understand you know not everyone's life once again going to, back to that different work schedule everyone's life is very different everyone has different challenges in life everyone has you know you have nieces nephews living around the house you have a, a packed house uh, packed apartments, small apartment, um, and you, you have a lot of distractions. Yeah, someone's pregnant, there's there's kids everywhere, you, you know what I mean? Um, everyone has their different challenges, um, and, you know, everyone approaches things very differently. Um, and that's one big thing is uh, if you have that, try to try to um, dedicate one, one hour or something to Starbucks, and then some people don't have a babysitter, they're single parents. Um, get it you know my mom was a single parent so but she did she made do with what she had so i mean it's it's you definitely a neighbor or somebody that's willing to help you yeah uh, or something check um, your college because sometimes they offer child care for free for a few mm -hmm. hours or something yeah so there de it's definitely there's definitely ways to overcome a lot of challenges um and ultimately i mean it, it's up to you you're doing it for yourself and you're doing it for your family so yeah, it's, it's up to you on to how you handle those challenges, but um, good luck if for everything and anything, so. Yes, so this will be the end of part one of the video, and we'll do part two, which we'll be posting on Wednesday. So thank you so much for watching. Like if you like. Please subscribe so you don't miss us. And if you have any other questions or anything you want us to know or maybe answer in another video, um, leave that down below. Mm-hmm. We want to hear from you. And thank you so much. Don't give up. You can do it. It's doable. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.